CGS CIMB Research is expecting Air Asia Group to post a core net loss of 1.1 billion ringgit for FY20 amid the COVID-19 outbreak. It previously estimated a core net profit of 147 million ringgit. The research house says the carrier is seeing lower demand and yields in Malaysia, Thailand and the Philippines. It points out that all three airlines in the group have significant exposure to flights to China, Hong Kong and Macau. Malaysia, Thailand and the Philippines also have a much greater proportion of tourists that originate from the Greater China region than during the 2003 SARS epidemic. So the travel bans imposed by various countries will have a major impact on travel demand. While capacity deployments to Greater China have been reduced among the three low-cost carriers, CGS CIMB says the adjustments are insufficient in quantity and duration. The research house does note that the impact of the outbreak would be somewhat offset by lower spot jet fuel prices. However, AirAsia Group is less able to tolerate unexpected changes to demand and yields, given that its profitability has already been adversely affected by the higher cost of leasing planes. CGS CIMB cut its target price for the stock to one ringgit three cent from one ringgit fifty-eight previously. AirAsia Group ended the day unchanged at one ringgit nineteen cent. Singapore's expected 10.9 billion Sing dollar budget deficit could lead to financial markets being more lenient on other countries in the region veering away from fiscal targets. Deputy International Trade and Industry Minister Ong Kian Ming spoke to Bloomberg ahead of the unveiling of Singapore's massive 2020 budget today. The island nation was already widely expected to announce a deficit. Ong said in this context, and with many countries in the region announcing stimulus packages, the markets could be less twitchy about possible deviations in any deficit targets experienced by other countries in the region. He also noted that Singapore could be the start of several economies making similar announcements as they try to counter the impact of the COVID-19 epidemic. Singapore pledged 6.4 billion Sing dollars today in response to the outbreak. The 10.8 billion Singapore dollar deficit, its highest since the global financial crisis 10 years ago, comes in at 2.1% of GDP and exceeds the projected deficit of $8.7 billion in 2009. That 2009 estimate was later revised to a shortfall of just 819 million Singapore dollars. Malaysia's stimulus package is set to be announced next Thursday. Petronas Gas or Pat Gas reported a 61.4% jump in fourth quarter net profit to 485.27 million ringgit. Driven by higher share of profit from joint ventures, unrealized foreign exchange gains from translation of US dollar denominated lease liabilities, and higher interest income from fund investments. Revenue for the quarter dipped 1.1% to 1.37 billion ringgit. Petgas explains that its bottom line was boosted by a higher share of profit at its 60% owned JV, Kimanis Power, and its air separation units in Pengarang. It declared a fourth interim dividend of 22 cents per share and a special interim dividend of 10 cents per share. For FY19, net profit rose 8.4% year on year to 1.94 billion ringgit, while revenue was 0.7% lower at 5.46 billion ringgit. On its prospects, Petgas expects its transportation and regasification business segments to be affected by the new incentive-based regulation tariffs policy. Still, both segments should contribute to the group's earnings. It says its gas processing segment should remain stable. Shipping firm MISC saw its fourth quarter earnings slump by 26% to 249.9 million ringgit as it recorded widening operating loss in its other segments and higher finance cost and impairment loss on ships and offshore floating assets. Quarterly revenue inched down by 0.5% to 2.38 billion ringgit. MISC declared a dividend of 9 cents per share and a special dividend of 3 cents per share. For the full year, Net profit rose by 8.8% to 1.43 billion ringgit, while top line was up by some 2.1% to 8.96 billion ringgit. On its prospects, 
MISE says the recent COVID-19 virus outbreak poses some risks to the oil and tanker market. While the impact is currently uncertain, the company believes the tanker market could face short-term headwinds if the epidemic is not contained or the situation escalates. As for its marine business, MISC is cautiously optimistic and says it expects no further deferment of dry docking activities by ship owners in relation to the implementation of the new rules set out by the International Maritime Organization for ships to use cleaner, low-sulphur fuels starting this year. In the latest twist in the tussle at Tiger Synergy, the construction and property development outfit and its executive chairman, Datuk Tan Wei Lian Se, they filed an originating summons at the KL High Court against major shareholder Safari Alliance last Friday. The two parties are attempting to get the court to declare that Safari Alliance's notice to convene an EGM for Tiger Synergy on March 2, 2020 is invalid. In a statement to Bursa Malaysia today, Tiger Synergy said they are seeking, among others, a court order to restrain Safari Alliance from convening the EGM to remove seven directors from the board and to appoint five new members. The matter was fixed for hearing yesterday and the court will announce its decision tomorrow. To recap, Tiger Synergy's board of directors have issued a separate notice for an EGM this coming Thursday. However, Safari Alliance declared it as an attempt to hijack the EGM it was planning for Tiger Synergy next month and filed a suit to get the notice for Thursday's EGM invalidated. <laughs>